Hello, everyone, and inside today's episode of Locked On Canadians, Alex Newhook is a Montreal Canadian. What are the Canadians going to do with the draft now that they have traded the 31st and 37th overall pick? And the Pierre Luc Dubois drama is over. It is no more. We will discuss that and more inside today's episode. You are Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 875 of Locked On Canadians. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. We are Locked On Canadians. We are your daily Montreal Canadiens podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where you get your team every single day, wherever you get your daily podcast, or if you are watching us on YouTube. I am one of your hosts. I am Scott Mell. I am back from Toronto, as you can see by all the New Japan stuff here. And I am joined, as always, by my co-host, the active stick, Laura Saba. And Laura, after a relatively quiet weekend, the Montreal Canadiens decided on Tuesday to just be like, hey, we know the draft is tomorrow. What if we just do a bunch of stuff? And they went and did that. And I got to be honest... I am here for the content across the board. <laughs> it's not just that they went and did stuff. It's that they're talking about continuing to do stuff, potentially. I mean, the last thing I read as I was, you know, leaving work to come home was that uh, Kent Hughes was open to listening to offers about the fifth pick. And I, I just want to say it's fifth overall, guys. Like, I, a lot of people are predicting he's going to trade down and unless he's trading down for two players i don't want to see it (laughs) so we will touch on what kent hughes is thinking up top here in our in our next segment actually because there's a lot to potentially say about that the biggest thing in the news today is the canadians missed out on pierre luc dubois we will talk about that even later on in the show here but they made a trade with the colorado avalanche today they sent 31st overall 37th overall and defenseman Gianni Fairbrother who missed all of last season with a really bad knee injury to the Colorado avalanche for forward Alex Newhook and Newhook you will remember is one of those guys who's available in 2019 when Cole Caulfield was picked by the Canadians we at the eyes on the prize slack chat where there's one of Caulfield Newhook or Krebs at 19th over or 15th overall in 2019 that's that's great that is a hall of players there and they've ended up with him they end up with kirby doc too they are dedicated to adding as many members of the 2019 draft class as they can to this team and my first thought is i don't know if i love this in the same way that i loved the kirby doc trade i look at 31st overall i go okay fine 37th feels like a lot It's a deep draft, and yes, there is a fall-off of players. But as we've talked with people, there are good players beyond the first 32 picks in this draft, and I have my concerns that they might have given up too much, but I am also willing to trust the judgment of Kent Hughes, and he and Martin say that we talked a lot about this. I think that they are hoping to find that Kirby Doc... uh, growth in him in Alex Newhook that is Uh, I believe it was Corey Schneider who does all three zones posted charts of Doc in Chicago and when he got to Montreal and what Newhook looks like right now and over his time there and they are very eerily similar in that I am now understanding why they have kind of made the choice to go after Alex Newhook in this because he Chicago probably wants to bring JT Comfort back and they didn't want to put Newhook in that role. My first thought is initially on the outset here without anything else done around this, it feels like too much, but I'm also willing to listen to other reasoning on this right now at this moment. I think what the Canadians are seeing in him is a potential that we're not 
seeing in him yet, uh, which kind of was the case with Alex Newhook as well. Because at first glance, when you look at this, it does look very much like an overpay. Absolutely. I think that the Canadians think that there's a vision there. There's a method to their madness. There's a reasoning behind what they did. And I think that exactly like you said, they think that they're going to be able to recapture the Kirby Duck uh, rehabilitation project magic, whatever it is. Um, he, like, it's not that I think that he has been underwhelming. It's that you kind of look at who he's played with in Colorado and you think, all right, there's a pretty good chance that it could go either way. And I think a lot of people are looking at two things. They're looking at Kirby Doc, but they're also contextualizing it with also Justin Barron, right? It feels like trading Arturi Lekkinen for Justin Barron was an overpay in hindsight. Like, I, I know we made a lot of people angry, Scott, when you suggested that Kent Hughes might have fleeced uh, Joe Sackick. But the thing with Arturi Lekkinen, too, is that he's the kind of player that isn't a superstar. He's a serviceable reliable forward the kind of guy you win with and Justin Barron quite frankly hasn't had enough time to prove to us whether he is or he isn't a reliable defenseman we don't know that he's had injury issues he's had inconsistency issues and he still has the same kind of promise like I'm not ready to give up on him yet he's only been here for what a season um and, and again he came off an injury right like he when he first started playing here he got injured almost right away um, and it took him a while to get back on track in the AHL. And then what we saw in the AHL was great. And the again, the NHL level, I think for defense, there's a lot of question marks just because most people were injured in and out of the lineup. People were playing with mismatched people. So I'm willing to give this Alex Newhook experiment um, some time to kind of determine whether or not this was an overpay. But initially, my immediate reaction is, yes, it does. It feels like an overpay. Um. And so, I don't know, like, I, I think that for me, the, like, the Kent Hughes philosophy is still not apparent. They're saying a lot of stuff, like, like, Emil Heinemann was another big question mark, right? Like, we, we still don't know, like, what they're seeing in him. And we, two years from now, we could be going back on what we're saying, and it could be something where we're all eating our words. Two years from now, all, every single one of these players might have developed and might have attain the, their ceiling and you have to admit their ceiling is pretty high we're talking about a bunch of first rounders here so I, i'm not I, I lost scott there i got distracted uh hopefully he'll hop back in soon there's some some issues on his end uh technically i sincerely hope he reappears well there's his face again uh but uh, in the meantime i just i'm struggling to see what kent hughes sees in these players and it could be one of those things where it's like it's a it's a unexploited market inefficiency where these players look like they're just average and they might be something more than that. I, am. Uh, so I am here. Um, I have to turn off my camera. My Wi-Fi is acting up on me here. So I am still here. Unfortunately um, it's, I'm not really sure what's up with that, but I agree with what you were saying on that. And I'm also looking at, the the scoring from the 2019 class and the one in front of Alex Newhook is Cole Caulfield. There is time here to see what Alex Newhook uh, can be as a player, which is not the worst thing in the world here for that to happen. It, it's one of those things I have to give it time. I'm not crazy about giving up what they did for that and what is supposed to be a, dr a deeper draft class, but I'm also willing to kind of hear them out on this and see where it goes. Cause I think that they went and got a player that plays the style the Canadians want and they want to play with speed and they want to play with skill and other things like that. I am excited to see what Alex Newhook can do. Ken Hughes was his agent. And if anyone's going to be familiar with what Alex Newhook can do, it's probably the guy who, you know, got him his rookie contract and his time in Colorado there. Now, though, the question becomes, what are the Canadians going to do at the NHL draft here? There are a lot of questions about this. What are they going to do? I have theories on this, and we're going to get into those coming up next. But first, today's show is brought to you by Game Time. As we mentioned before, Game Time is the sponsor for today's show, and it is always hard 
to find tickets for things, no matter where you are. And if you are ever struggling to find your spot, Game Time is the app for you. They have flash deals, last minute ticket sales, and it's easy to find and buy for any event in year. You want to go see a show on Broadway, you want to go see a baseball game, you want to see a hockey game, you want to see a comedy show. Game Time will have you covered, and you can see your seats with their image viewer. And they have the lowest price guarantee event cancellation and job loss protection for anything should anything go wrong and you don't have to plan months in advance anymore game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event so if you download the game time app right now you can use code lockdown nhl for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code lockdown nhl for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed and please make sure you have checked out the Locked On NHL Mock Draft. It has been a labor of love for everyone involved. It is on the Locked On NHL YouTube and wherever you find their daily podcast. You don't want to miss out on that. Uh, before we jump into the next segment, I am sorry. My camera is working. My Wi-Fi is just cutting in and out that every time I turn my camera back on, it decides that, no, it no longer wants to, to uh, operate at that level. So... Uh, at the risk of having this pixelated weird mess for you, uh, this is what I have right now, and I will get this sorted out before our show on draft night. And so people get the chance to kind of just stare at me while I look up Alex Newhook stats <laughs> and try to see if there's any more uh, later information about what Kent Hughes is planning to do. Uh, so bear with me, listeners. I'm sorry. As Scott talks, I'm like, I'm I'm very mindful of the fact that like all eyes are probably on me. Uh, also, I still haven't recovered from my move. So any of any of you who were listening yesterday, I'm only marginally less tired than I was. But I literally like I literally as Scott was talking, I was looking up like rumors and I was like, oh, wait, people can see me doing this. <laughs> yes. So speaking of the NHL draft, we know the Canadians had the fifth overall pick here. Like that is confirmed. That is not going to change here. My biggest question here now is what are they going to do? Because with 31st overall, we thought for sure they're going to make a deal. They're going to make a move. They're going to do something. Whatever that something is, I don't really know, but they were going to do something. And then they traded 37th overall. They had a chance to really do kind of what they did in the last draft where they landed Owen Beck and Philip Mashar and kind of load up a little bit more. My wonder is here, if you hear the squeaking in the background, that is my dog. I am very sorry about that, is I am wondering if they are now going to take up Philadelphia on the rumored trade. They want to, Philadelphia wants to trade up to land Metev Michkov, which, fair, he's great. The Canadians haven't really decided whether or not that's the route they want to go. My curious question is, is that do they trade fifth overall? For the Flyers' seventh and twenty-second overall picks here, they get that late first-round pick back. They still stay in that top ten. If Arizona takes a Benson or an Oliver Moore or uh, Ryan Leonard, Dvorsky, and they wanted Reinbacher, which is the, potentially the rumor, yeah, they can go ahead and do that still, and they get that late-round pick to go take a swing at somebody else, a Gavin Brindley, a. Andrew Cristal, Edward Shala, if they were to fall that far. I it makes too much sense. I'm just wondering if there's an added piece in that. I'm Laura, I'm curious uh what your thought is on that. It does seem very likely that it would be that um seven and twenty-two. There are rumors about Washington too, like they would trade with Washington. I don't necessarily know what what they're planning to do, but to me. It's like if you're not interested in one of those swing for the fences top five talents and you really want to go for somebody like Reinbacher and you know he's going to be available later, sure, trade down and get more. Two picks in the first round and particularly one that's higher than 31st or much higher than 31st, it does make sense. I just to me, I'm like, why would you why is Reinbacher your target from this deep draft? That's the part I'm having trouble wrapping my head around. This guy is a, he's ranked 11th, 12th. He started this, the year being ranked 14th to 16th, right? This guy is, I'm sure he's great. He's just, his, his floor is pretty high, but his ceiling is not much higher than that. Like, why would you do that? Like, it makes sense if he's the guy you want, but how funny would it be if they traded down and then somebody else took Reinbacher way too high? 
Uh, nope, still not. So my that is that's a good point. Is that and the thing is, I was talking to Hattie Kalakash about this. Is that it seems like if you're gonna trade, if you're gonna make this trade for New Hook, and you're gonna give up 31 and 37, where you get two cracks at potential first round talents there, depending on who falls out, make the pick that you do have worth something. Trading down for David Reinbacher and giving up the picks you did for uh, Alex Newhook feels like a very weird bet. And yeah, Alex Newhook could turn out great. He could be a next Kirby Doc type player, maybe. Maybe he has that ability to do so. I am just, I don't want them to play it safe. I like Ryan Leonard. Ryan Leonard, I think, would be a fine pick there. I like Zach Benson. If Zach Benson can turn out and be that guy, that would be great as well. I just don't want them to be overly safe on this. It feels like a very boring way to go about that. And I would really rather they just do the, do something exciting with that. And which is why I think trading down might be the right option. I'm just hoping that if they're trading down, it's because they have an exciting piece in mind with that overall. And I'm curious, like I said, if there's an add-on in there and Philadelphia just cleared some cap space, I'm going to go look at their cap friendly here in the background real quick and just take a look and see what right. kind of money. They seem, to, they seem to be trying to really rat, uh, drastically change their fortunes in a hurry. Yeah, and I'm looking at the Flyers cap friendly page. They've got $10 million in cap space right now. Uh, they let Kiefer Bellows go, not qualified. Brendan Lemieux is the UFA. JVR is a UFA. He's not coming back. Cam York is an RFA, which they will have to obviously re-sign. Um, Carter Hart's up for a deal next year. So are a couple of members of their defense. But like they don't have a lot of guys that are going to need to spend a lot of money. So my question is, I'm wondering, if you're the Canadians, do you attach Christian Dvorak in fifth overall for 7-22? and 22? Maybe you use one of your retention slots on some Dvorak's contract and save them some money. And it becomes now the Flyers get someone who can play in their lineup. He doesn't have to be great because they want to rebuild, which is awesome. The Canadians now then have their three centers, one, two, and three. Suzuki, Doc, and the new hook can be your third line center there. You can give them potentially some easier minutes and make this work. And I am wondering if that is not the way what Ken Hughes is thinking. If the rumored, oh, they're thinking about trading down comes true or they're looking at moving number five. It's I am truly hoping that they have something in mind here because I don't love the idea of what they gave up here in a draft where they could have really added so much to uh, their pro their prospect pool there. Right. I think I don't know. I still feel like trading down is not a good idea. I That's just that's just the instinct that I have. Unless you absolutely know that the player that you really want is going to be available. But usually in those scenarios, the player that you really want is going to be available. They're still much better than where you draft them at. It's just that you know that the other teams are interested in other people. Yeah, and it's like we'll never know before we like actually get to the draft floor because we know Kent Hughes likes to play things close to the best. No one knew Alex Newhook was the thing that was coming down the pipeline here. Like no one knew that Kirby doc was the thing that they were even interested in. There is so much that could potentially be happening here. That is important. And for all we know, Hughes may just wait and see who goes third overall. If it's Carlson, maybe he'll wait and see what the sharks do. If it's not Carlson and it's Will Smith, I think before the sharks make their pick, Kent Hughes will have traded that pick or made his decision on that pick. So uh, we do have much more to get into though. As we talked about the Canadians did finally miss the, the, the Pierre Luc Dubois saga is over. It's done. We do not have to go over this anymore. I am so sad that you cannot see my hand gesturing while I do this. So I apologize, but we will get into all of that and more coming up next. We are back here at Locked On Canadians. As always, thank you so much for joining us. We will be here for the draft. We will have our draft video. We will have our show after that where we recap the night. We will have a live show on Friday going over everything for the week and getting ready for free agent frenzy. But for now, Laura, we have to talk about Pierre-Luc Dubois one more time. Are you ready to do that? Our long national nightmare is now over. And I am so happy about this. I just want to say that I don't think the Canadians should have paid what 
LA paid for Pierre Duc Dubois. I just I don't think it was in the Canadians' best interest. I think the Canadians are a rebuilding team and they need to hold on to as many assets as they can get. Um, and at the same time, I just feel like somebody who, you know, quote unquote, wanted to come here anyway and did not want to end up in Winnipeg, like that's the person who kind of had most of the leverage and that gave the Canadians leverage. So giving them anything of too much value, I wouldn't say, you know, nothing, but giving them anything of too much value would have been an overpay for PLD. Uh, also, most people here, for whatever reason, said they didn't want him at all, uh, partly because they thought he was a diva. Um, I think the Canadians can find a center. Yes, he's a phenomenal player, but I think the Canadians can find a center. I think the Canadians can have a deep middle. Um, if that makes sense, a deep middle. I don't know. <laughs> Is that an oxymoron? But the Canadians can have that. Like they can be stacked up the middle uh, with serviceable. No, serviceable is not a good word. With good, like objectively good centers, uh, even if they're not superstars. Obviously, given the opportunity, you want to draft a superstar or trade for one. In the absence of that, the Canadians have strong centers. I think strong is the best word. So they really need to figure out, they really need to make sure that their team is able to do the cliche thing, which is score by committee, all of that stuff. So to me, like PLD is not that big a loss. It's a loss for sure. It would have been great to have him on this team. And I'm not going to say that I wouldn't have wanted him if he, if he did end up here. I just never wanted the Canadians to overpay. I don't necessarily think LA overpaid because their situation is different. They've already made the playoffs a couple of times. They're way further ahead in their rebuild than the Canadians are. Their prospect pool is different. Their philosophy is different. They've got a concrete direction that they're going in where the Canadians still, to me, I can't see the direction just yet. Uh, but I'm just, honestly, I'm just really glad to not have to deal with Winnipeg Jets fans and their, like, ridiculous demands. And my thing with this whole PLD trade is it's that it was a sign-in trade. We knew it was probably going to be a sign-in trade. Eight years, eight and a half million. It's a lot of money, but with the cap going up, okay, I can kind of stomach and understand that. But I look at the pieces that went to LA. Gabe Velarde, Alex Ayafalo, and Rasmus Kupari, plus a second round pick. It, all the insiders today could talk about was the Canadians were offering futures, not pieces for now, and the Winnipeg Jets wanted pieces for now, which, sure, I guess, but they're not quite doing the teardown the way the uh, Calgary Flames are. But if Connor Hellebuck is going, the Jets are in a rebuild, whether they want to admit it or not. And you're getting a bunch of guys for now who are probably going to be fine. I I like Gabe Velarde. I think Alex I follows fine. Rasmus, Rasmus Kupari is probably a very good, you know, useful bottom six piece. But are they going to be guys who help this team win now versus PLD? And yes, PLD didn't want to be there. Or would it have been smarter to maybe take the package deal here? Because Ken Hughes says, I couldn't have done both. Even if I wanted to, I could have made both trades, which makes me think that his package was sent around 31, 37. And then either Josh Anderson or someone else was a name that was mentioned out there that Winnipeg wasn't interested in because they're interested in a certain type of player. And I go... Anderson's an established NHLer with playoff pedigree, pedigree, sorry, but like playoff experience. Let me say it that way. I think the Jets made out really well this, and I think Vancouver kind of, or Vancouver, Winnipeg, or Los Angeles. Wow, sorry, long day. Los Angeles kind of played right into that, gave them exactly what they wanted, and Winnipeg somehow made out like bandits. I'm not 100% sure how they pulled it off, but it is some impressive work from Kevin Chevaldayoff. I'm just glad to not have to ever talk about this anymore. I'm glad this saga is done and over with. He's like, I saw an opportunity to go play in a market like LA, and that's all I ever really wanted, which I'm going to say, sure, bull crap to that, but whatever helps you, man. I'm tired and done with this. I am very excited to watch him get booed to oblivion when LA comes to Montreal because he's going to touch the puck and it's going to be bad. It's going to be real bad. It's going to be angry, heart, you know, wrenching booze for him. And then he will promptly score a hat trick because that's how this works. So uh, I, I'm glad this is done with. I'm disappointed it didn't turn out in the Canadians' favor, of course. 
PLD is a great player. I'm just, I'm not going to miss any of the drama, the will he, or he won't he, the, do you accept this Rose melodrama bull crap that went along with it? <laughs> it's done. It's over with. I don't have to worry about this for another two years when the Kings realizing they don't have any goaltending start to lose games and he wants to leave again. So it's just, I'm happy. It's over. It's done with. Let's move on with our lives. I agree. It's like, like, what do you even say at that point? Like, I, th- we, we've said so much about Pierre Luc Dubois, where he fits, where he doesn't fit, this and that, that there's just nothing else to say about it anymore. Like, we're both, we were both very tired of talking about it. Like, I, I don't know what else we can say without being repetitive. I'm sure we will get asked about it when we do our Friday live show. Like, what would you have offered? And I would say, not three NHL players, but that's just me. Uh, I'm very excited to see what Kent Hughes' next move is. Uh, as we learned before the show, Tyler Toffoli will not be coming back to Montreal. He was traded to the Devils for Igor Sharangovich and a third-round pick in this year's draft. So go ahead and dash those plans. But Kent Hughes has something else cooking. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it is very, very spicy. We will be live, not live, but we will have a show for you after our draft. We will have... An instant recap uh, with Hattie Kalakesh and Gil Martin on whatever pick the Canadians do make, whether that be fifth overall or if they trade down, we will have something for you on that. Remember to subscribe wherever you get your daily podcasts or on YouTube so you can be sure every single time we go live like we are this Friday. So you don't want to miss that. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians. Follow Laura at The Active Stick. Follow myself at Scott Metla. We appreciate all of y'all and we will see you all next time.